Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's presentation of PD or Parkinson's Disease 101. I'm Chelsea Dooley. I am one of the care advisors for NeuroChallenge Foundation for Parkinson's. Today's presentation of PD 101 is not only helpful for folks who have had a suspected or recent diagnosis of Parkinson's disease, but it's also helpful for people who have had a diagnosis for quite some time. It's also a helpful presentation for care partners or those with a loved one with Parkinson's disease, as well as community partners and healthcare professionals who want to learn more about Parkinson's disease. I'm going to go ahead and screen share here so you can see the presentation as we go through. All right. So today's presentation, we're going to talk about both Parkinson's disease as well as the role of NeuroChallenge Foundation. A little bit about who we are at NeuroChallenge Foundation for Parkinson's. We are a local 501c3 nonprofit serving Sarasota County, Manatee County, Pinellas County, Charlotte County, Highlands County, and Marion Counties. However, through our virtual platform, we've been able to share our knowledge and connect with people outside of those counties, as well as other states and even other countries. Our mission is to improve the quality of life of people with Parkinson's and their care partners. We currently serve more than 2,700 people affected by Parkinson's each year at no charge. We strive to achieve our mission by providing people with Parkinson's and their care partners a better approach to Parkinson's. Our better approach to Parkinson's includes several facets of NeuroChallenge. Care advisors. Care advising helps people with Parkinson's and their caregivers, who we term care partners, as it really is a partnership between the two people. And oftentimes there's more than two people in this care partnership at any one given time. We help navigate the complexities of managing the disease by providing individualized support and community resource referrals. NeuroChallenge also has monthly educational support and therapeutic programs. Care advisors coordinate and facilitate over 45 monthly programs again, in our six counties and beyond those six counties, including some of our large scale and small scale educational programs. Our distinguished speaker series are semi-annually held, they're mid-sized educational events in the local communities. The annual Parkinson's Symposium is held in partnership with Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System and features presentations from Parkinson's experts. And our Parkinson's Expo, which is annually held and is a day-long event created to engage, educate, and empower the Parkinson's community. The Expo features several presenters who are nationally renowned Parkinson's experts and is the largest Parkinson's specific Expo in the country. Our vision is that all people affected by Parkinson's disease live a life of wellness with hope for the future. And our core values include maintaining the highest standards throughout our organization, operating as a unified entity in a culture of service, respect, and collaboration, and making a relentless effort to better understand, combat, and develop a better approach to Parkinson's disease by serving all people. Some of our major strategic goals within NeuroChallenge is to promote awareness and participation through community partnerships. Community partnerships allow us to help our Parkinson's community by getting them connected with other groups in the area. To actively address the emotional, financial, and educational needs of people with Parkinson's and their care partners, to strengthen the organizational infrastructure toward creating a flexible, financially strong, and high-performing organization, 
to facilitate access to community resources and to educate the community about Parkinson's disease. More information can be found directly on our website, which is www.neurochallenge.org. A full listing of all of our upcoming programs, including all of our virtual programming, can be found directly on our website, as well as the ability to sign up for our e-newsletter, and also the information on care advising sessions, which are held during our times in office in Sarasota, Bradenton, and Northport, and currently held either virtually or over the phone. No referral is needed for care advising, and all of these programs are offered at absolutely no charge. You can also follow us on Facebook. So now we're gonna get into the meat of our presentation. What is Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's is a movement disorder that can affect one's ability to perform common daily activities. It is chronic and progressive. It's a disorder of both the brain and central nervous system. The symptoms can gradually worsen over time. However, no one person's journey with Parkinson's is the same. Someone can take many, many years and have um, virtually no change in symptoms and someone else can experience different symptoms and may change on a little bit quicker of a course. It's marked by a deficiency of dopamine, which dopamine is a chemical messenger in the brain characterized most commonly by motor symptoms, but also very important to note is that many folks with Parkinson's disease experience non-motor symptoms. Oftentimes the non-motor symptoms are reported as being more of a challenge for both the person with Parkinson's as well as their care partner. 10 early signs of Parkinson's disease include Tremor, which is the symptom that most people are most familiar with. Small handwriting. Loss of sense of smell, and oftentimes loss of sense of smell can happen many, many years before the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. Trouble sleeping. Difficulty with movement or walking. Constipation. A soft or low voice. A masked facial expression, dizziness or fainting, and stooping or hunching over. Now, most people think that Parkinson's disease, again, they're most familiar with the tremor, but it's important to note that you only need to have two of the four main symptoms have to be present over a period of time to have a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. The diagnosis is most often made by a neurologist, and those four symptoms are tremor, slowness of movement, which is called bradykinesia, stiffness or rigidity in the arms, legs, or trunk, and trouble with balance, and possible falls, which are also termed postural instability. So someone only needs to have, again, two of the four of those symptoms for a diagnosis. So a person may not experience tremor as one of their main symptoms, if at all. The most common motor symptoms are again, tremors, slowness of movement, which is that bradykinesia, stiffness and impaired balance, which we just talked about. Also difficulty initiating movements. Freezing episodes, which is the inability to move during execution of a movement sequence, or overreactivity of muscles, which is called dyskinesia. Some of the most common non-motor symptoms, which again are oftentimes reported to be more troublesome for the person with Parkinson's, as well as their care partner, are difficulty with sleeping, constipation, decreased facial expression, which is also called facial masking, depression and anxiety, slurred speech, apathy, loss of smell, and cognitive impairment. Now, a couple of these I wanna go over in just a little bit more detail. 
constipation comes up a lot because a lot of folks don't realize that with Parkinson's, it affects everything from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. And so it is going to affect the gut and it is going to affect digestion. Uh, we'll get into diet and hydration a little bit later in the presentation, but it's important to note um, that constipation is often a problem for those with PD. Also the depression, anxiety, and apathy all kind of go together. Dopamine in the brain is responsible for the movement disorder of Parkinson's, but it also plays a part, a large part in mental health. And so depression, anxiety, and apathy are not only a reaction to a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease, but are also caused by that change in dopamine in the brain. The stages of Parkinson's disease, I'm not gonna go over um, all the details of all five, but it's kind of just important to have a distinction between what mild, moderate, and advanced Parkinson's means. Mild Parkinson's, the movement symptom may be inconvenient, but it doesn't affect your ability to live your daily life. Oftentimes the symptoms are only on one side, but can be on both. When you get into moderate Parkinson's disease, the body moves more slowly. Balance becomes a much larger issue. Trouble with coordination may start to occur. With advanced PD, you get into an area where the person may have greater difficulty walking, they might still be able to transfer and ambulate um, with a walker, but oftentimes need a wheelchair. And when somebody has advanced stages, it really does impact their daily life. And oftentimes they may need a lot more help with their activities of daily living. So who has Parkinson's disease? Up to 1.5 million people are living with Parkinson's disease in the US. And it's important to understand that this is more than the people with multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, Lou Gehrig's, or ALS combined. Approximately 100,000 Americans are diagnosed with PD each year. More than 10 million people worldwide are living with PD. And we know that close to 10,000 people are affected by PD in the six counties we serve alone. Incidence of Parkinson's disease increase with age. 15% of people are diagnosed before the age of 50, and we term that young onset Parkinson's disease, but the average age of onset is 62 years old. Parkinson's disease also affects both men and women. So what are the causes of Parkinson's disease? The cause of Parkinson's disease is still greatly unknown, although there is some evidence for both environmental and genetic factors, sometimes a combination of both. Environmental factors such as exposure to pesticides or chemicals of war like Agent Orange, also repeated head injuries, are all known to be possible environmental factors that are linked with Parkinson's disease diagnosis. There are some genetic factors. However, it's estimated that less than 10% of cases of Parkinson's disease are primarily due to genetic causes. The main risk factor for Parkinson's is age because it most commonly is found in adults over the age of 50. Most of the time, Parkinson's disease is considered to be idiopathic, which just means that there is no known origin. So when someone is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, what can they do? Oftentimes we recommend somebody get a referral to a specialist, which is a movement disorder specialist who is a neurologist with additional fellowship training specifically in movement disorders, Parkinson's disease being the largest of those movement disorders. Seeking care from therapists, including occupational, physical, and speech therapists, meeting potentially with a medical social worker, 
beginning exercise and getting support from family and friends. We're gonna go into a couple of these um, in a little bit more depth here momentarily. So the members of your Parkinson's treatment team. Again, we talked about the fact that at NeuroChallenge, we refer to caregivers as care partners because we really do view it as a partnership of care. A care partner is oftentimes, but may not necessarily be a spouse. It could be an adult child or other relative. It could be a neighbor, a friend, somebody at a support group or church group. Um, a care partner can even be somebody who is a paid caregiver who has an active role in that individual's care. The neurologist, again, a, a board certified movement disorder specialist is the specialist in Parkinson's disease. A physical therapist can assist with overcoming muscular impairments and movement impairments. An occupational therapist is important because they're able to assist with activities of daily living and keeping one's home as safe as possible to live in. Speech therapy is incredibly important with Parkinson's disease because as we talked about, Parkinson's affects every part of the body, including the voice and the muscles in the throat that are responsible for talking and for swallowing. When someone with Parkinson's works with a speech therapist, they can improve the low voice, they can improve their communication, and they can also help take an active role in preventing swallowing um, difficulties as well. Social workers and therapists can assist with the effects on one's life and personal relationships that come with Parkinson's disease. Nutritionists can assist with the management of diet and medications. And personal trainers or other exercise professionals can assist with an exercise program. And exercise is the only known thing to help slow the progression of Parkinson's disease. Being an empowered Parkinson's fighter means several things. It means managing medications, exercising regularly, maintaining proper nutrition, educating yourself on Parkinson's disease, seeking social support, and having a positive attitude. Medications with Parkinson's disease, unlike some other diagnosis, is very, very important to take them at the proper times to get the best benefit from them. For other diagnoses and other medications, you may simply need to take a medication first thing in the morning or in the evening or twice daily or three times daily. With Parkinson's medications, it is extremely important to have a time frame that you're taking your medications and you're taking them properly and on time every time. The goal of medication in Parkinson's disease is to keep the levels of dopamine in the brain to near normal levels and manage what we call on and off periods. On periods being where somebody feels the most like they did prior to having Parkinson's, their movements aren't as hindering on them. Um, off periods are when a person tends to feel either the medication wearing off or return of their Parkinson's symptoms. Most of the time, and most commonly, the medications that somebody with Parkinson's is recommended and prescribed to take is some version of a dopamine replacement or carbidopa levodopa. It remains the most common medication taken, although there are other medications that can be taken with Parkinson's disease as well. Again, timing of medication is absolutely critical with Parkinson's disease. Individualized evaluations and treatments are very necessary with PD because every single person's journey with PD is unique. We have a saying that if you've met one person with Parkinson's, you've met one person with Parkinson's. And that is because no one person with Parkinson's experiences their journey and their symptoms in the same way. Exercise. Exercise is crucial 
to helping maintain mobility, strength, and flexibility. And it is, is as important as medication in disease management. Exercise is medicine, and it is the medicine that is the one known thing to help slow the progression of Parkinson's disease. Selection of ideal exercise program is dependent on the individual, what their stage is, the severity of their symptoms. Um, there are wonderful programs like rock study boxing and pedaling for Parkinson's, which were created to optimally work with folks with Parkinson's in order to help them with their symptoms. Any exercise, however, is good for the body and good for someone with PD. Exercising a minimum of two and a half times per week can impact disease progression. Nutrition with Parkinson's disease. There's not a specific Parkinson's diet per se, but most doctors tend to recommend something closest to a Mediterranean diet meaning that you're eating lean protein, you're eating lots of fruits and veggies, you're eating lots of nuts, legumes, limiting sugar, caffeine. Adequate water is very important in Parkinson's disease for several reasons. The first being that when you're taking a medication, you need to make sure to have enough water in order to get that pill where it needs to go in your system so that it doesn't just sit there and it can actually be absorbed in your body properly. Also, as we talked about earlier, folks with Parkinson's tend to experience constipation, um, either from time to time or chronically. And the more water a person drinks, the more hydrated they are, it's going to help the body naturally move um, the bowels and affect constipation. Certainly fiber rich foods are very important for the same reason. Proper, proper nutrition is also important because somebody with Parkinson's can also experience what a lot of the aging population can experience, which is weakened bones, dehydration, weight loss, constipation. Um, certainly other medications that somebody may take may cause constipation in and of themselves. So that's why it's important, especially to have um, a diet that has lots of fiber and intake of water. Education is a huge way that somebody with Parkinson's as well as care partners can assist in the Parkinson's journey. The more you can learn and be supported by those around you about Parkinson's disease helps empower the person with Parkinson's. Um, attending the wellness clubs, online webinars, education groups, symposiums, um, and currently we have education and support groups ongoing online as well is an excellent way to connect with others who are experiencing what you're experiencing, as well as receive support and tips and tricks from others. Social support. Being engaged in programs with individuals facing the same types of, of challenges is empowering. And certainly there are many ways to do that. Um, right now we're all being a little bit more creative with how to get socialization but I would certainly encourage you, if you haven't already, to take a look at our calendar, our program's calendar, because we do update it with all of the programs that we have, um, both online and when we're able to safely resume in-person programming as well. Have a positive attitude. We call it being a Parkinson's fighter and not a sufferer. And simply changing that verbiage around and how you describe your Parkinson's journey can really help set the tone for how you're going to feel with Parkinson's. Being empowered, being present in that moment, remaining adaptable, remaining in a state of acceptance and gratitude. Everyone's journey is unique and certainly there are going to be hard times and challenging symptoms but knowing that there are others out there who can help, who can understand, and that there are groups and ways to connect with those people to help best support you does help the person with Parkinson's as well as their care partner feel supported and maintain a positive attitude. Certainly NeuroChallenge Foundation for Parkinson's can also help 
by empowering our community. We have over 6,000 experiences per year, including those education support groups, um, exercise programs that are available, creating a memorable, joyful, and therapeutic experience for people living with Parkinson's and their care partners. Together we are strong and together we can help through this journey. Thank you for attending today and please remember that you can visit our website at any time at www.neurochallenge.org. You may also reach out to a care advisor by calling our main number, which is the 941-926-6413 number. And again, all of our services are completely free of charge for folks with Parkinson's, care partners, and anyone who wants to learn more. Thank you so much for attending. Have a wonderful day.